My name is Kanika Garg and I've been working in artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science for past eight years. Today, we are going to discuss about ARIMA model for time series forecasting. These are the various topics that we are going to discuss. First, we will understand what exactly a time series forecasting means or what exactly time series is. Then what is the ARIMA model? Then we'll see a Python code to implement ARIMA model. And finally, some recommended courses so that you can study further or more about them. Now let's understand uh, what exactly time series forecasting is. So in, if I have to put them in a simple words, it means to forecast or to predict future based on some past values. For example, a uh, very popular is uh, stock price prediction. And uh, these days it was a Bitcoin price prediction, right? So what we are doing exactly is based on the past data that uh, the prices that have been changed over a period of time, we predict the prices of uh, the stocks based on those. So these are just the predictions based on the historical data. So forecasting occurs when we make scientific predictions which are based on the historical timestamped data. What exactly means timestamp data? The, the data that has been captured on particular time and the time frames are equal. If I say that I am tracking the prices of the stocks, that means I am tracking it maybe intraday or interdays. That means I am tracking it for a period of say one year every day. Or I say I am just tracking its price every minute in a day. So that means it is based on some time stamps. So time series forecasting have been in play for uh, for past maybe many years because we have been seeing the weather forecast and the uh, meteorological based data. So these are all the time uh, series based forecasting that have been in play for quite a some time here but now the uh, metal has changed and it has been used in almost all, all the businesses right now so this has become very popular now to implement time series we have a very popular model which is uh, also much easier to implement called as the arima model all right so this model has been in play for quite some time. This model basically means autoregressive integrated moving average model. Now it predicts future values based on the historical data. What exactly it does is it implements linear regression over the past data. So the ARIMA model has been comprised of various terms like it has been a combination of AR plus I plus MA. So these all have their particular meanings associated with them. All right. So AR stands for autoregression, which indicates that the model uses the dependent relationship between the current data and its past values. Okay. So the number of preceding inputs used to predict the next value is called its order. And usually it is referred to as P in the model. So it has basically three parameters we say. One is the autoregression, then the integrated. It represents the uh, uh, differencing of the raw observations. That means I stands for integration and it makes stationary time series out of our non-stationary time series. All right, so it basically create uh, differentiate our uh, series so that we can get a stationary time series. Then finally, the term moving average. Moving, moving average model basically uses the dependency between an observation and a, uh, the error from a moving average applied to the lagged observation. Okay, that means uh, MA is modeling the forecast values as a linear combination of the past error terms. So ARIMA models have uh, strong points and are good at forecasting based on par past circumstances. But there are more reasons to be cautious when using ARIMA. 
so arima models basically assumes that the past values have, have some residual effect on the current or the future values and use data from the past to forecast the future events all right so this is the basic or uh, to understand arima model if you want to go deep inside its uh, every parameter and working or the other parameters also because these are not confined to these auto regression integrated and moving average it also has some seasonality and other parameters so you can just refer to the recommended courses at the end of this session all right so moving on to the code the code is here in google collab and the example has been taken from kaggle even the data set also it is the air passengers data that have been traveling through air of course from 1949 till 1960 so you can easily get this data from the kaggle you can just type it there as air passengers data for uh, time series prediction forecasting or prediction first of course uh, we will be importing some libraries uh, which are important for us for example from stats models we are importing arima and we are also importing acf pcf and ad fuller and if you want to have uh, the deeper understanding about them just go through the recommended courses here we will just see the implementation of all these first of course i'm going to read the data set that is called as the air passengers now if you can just see we have monthly data or the stats available about the passengers how many passengers were traveling in that month so we have a monthly data available to us when we plot this onto the graph we see there is a trend in the upward direction that means the air passengers they are increasing over time from 1949 to 1960 so from this plot we say there is a trend component in the series so now we can just check for the stationarity in the data to understand or to predict the stationarity in the data we will going to find out the rolling statistics a rolling statistics or say average uh, you know continuously updates the average of a data set to include all the data in the set until that point for example the uh, rolling average of say some quantities we have to find out for march so what would we doing is we will be calculating these quantities by adding the quantities of january february march and then finally dividing them by 3 So we just have taken a rolling statistics that is average over some months that we wanted to. So here we are taking the yearly average. That means for twelve months. So our window size here is twelve. We are calculating mean and standard deviation. Now we plot these statistics on the graph. Now, if you see here, we see that rolling mean itself has a trend component here. See. whereas the standard deviation is fairly constant with the time that because we say this because it is parallel to x axis for our time series to be stationary we need to ensure that both rolling statistics mean and the standard deviation remain time invariant or say constant with time thus the curves for both of them have to be parallel to the x axis and in this case they are not so what we want is we want this mean to be parallel to x axis so to further augment our hypothesis uh, that the time series is not stationary we perform this test called as augmented dicky fuller test in short it is called as ad uh, adf test okay ad fuller also so of course if you have seen above we have imported its library now when we perform this test it gives us some statistics about the p values and the level of confidence at 1% 5% and 10% and we use these values to understand whether the series is stationary or not so this adcf test should have a very low p value or uh, very similar values for 
वन परसेंट फाइव परसेंट एंड टेन परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल इंटरवल नाउ इफ यू एस सी हियर पी वैल्यू इज जीरो पॉइंट नाइन नाइन विच इज नियर टू वन दैट मीन्स इट्स वेरी हाई एंड द क्रिटिकल वैल्यूज दे आर नॉट एट ऑल सिमिलर ओके एंड क्लोज टू दी टेस्ट स्टैटिस्टिक्स ऑल्सो दीज आर नॉट सो वी सी दैट हियर the series is not stationary so to make it further stationary we have to perform some transformations we can use log scale transformation or you can use the square root or you can use the squared cube or cube roots so here here we are using log scale transformation now if you see that after applying the log scale transformation in this graph here i just have plotted these two together so that we understand uh we see that even though the rolling mean is not stationary even now but it is still better than the previous case where no transformation has been applied so at least we say that we are uh, moving in the correct direction here also we say that there is a trend or say pattern uh in the log scale as well as in the moving average components right now what we can do is we apply an elementary intuition here that subtraction one from the other should remove the trend component generally whatever we do is we perform the differentials if you uh, remember even in the mathematics we used to perform del function so here also what we are doing is we are subtracting one from the other so that it will remove the trend component that we are doing here and then finally we are using uh, removing the nan values if we induce some okay now finally we'll we'll have a function to test for the stationarity of the time series data so here we will first determine the rolling rolling statistics and then we'll plot the rolling statistics right now i am calling this on the on this data where we have applied the log transformation and then we have performed the subtraction now if you see here we observe that our intuition that subtracting two related series having similar trend components will make the result stationary is true right if you see here i p value has been dropped to 0.022 from 0.9 that means that was approximately one at that time and now it is only 0.022 the critical values of uh, say 1% 5% and 10% intervals are pretty close to the test statistics right the test statistics are here so from the above two points we can say that our uh, given series is now stationary but in the spirit of you know getting better accuracy or maybe much higher accuracy than this let us explore and try to find out a better scale than our the current log right so we have a better scale called as exponential decay transformation so we can just apply exponential uh decay transformation and then we see where this graph will take us to so this graph say it seems that the exponential decay is not holding any advantage right because it is shown in the red and we had a similar fashion in the log transformation as both the corresponding curves are similar so but in statistic in statistics inferences cannot be drawn simply by looking at the graph right so we have to you know again um do the difference and then see the p statistics and the 1% 2% statistics there right we perform adecf test again on this dk series below now see here the p value of course it has gone very low to 0.0057 and if you can just see our uh, critical values at 1 5 and 10% of course they are very much closer to the test statistics so both the points say that our current transformation is better than the previous log transformation even though we couldn't observe any differences by just uh, 
looking visually over to them but the test confirmed the decay is much better right so what we'll do is we'll uh, try one more time and use the time shift transformation here okay so okay now if we see here it is clearly showing that it has become more stationary over the period of 1949 to 1960 so let's again draw the conclusion using adcf test and see our p value here is 0 0.0 7, which is not as good as 0 0.005 in the previous uh, exponential decay, right? And even the test statistic values, they are not much as close to the critical values as that for the exponential decay. So we have thus tried out three different transformations, log, exponential decay, and the time shift. And for simplicity, we will go with the log scale. Okay, so the reason for doing this is that we can revert back to the original scale during forecasting. So let us now break down the three components of the log scale. Okay. Using a system library function, once we separate our components, we can simply ignore the trend, seasonality, and check on the nature of the residual part, right? So let's just see what we'll get here. Okay. Now, from this graph, if you can just see these two graphs, okay, from the ACF graphs. We see that the curve touches y is equal to 0, 0 line at x equal to 2. Thus, from theory, q is equal to 2. And from the PACF graph, we see that the curve touches y equal to 0 line at x equal to 2. Thus, from theory, also p equals to 2. Okay. Now, finally, we have to build this ARIMA model. And of course, ARIMA is built with three components, AR, I, and MA. So we are using this, these results. And finally, plotting the ARIMA model. They work best when the predictions are not correlated and are independent of each other, right? Now, once we have plotted this, now we can see that our predictions are very much closer to what we got before. Now, to predict and reverse transform whether we got the actual data or not, we are just converting to the cumulative sum. And then we'll make the predictions and then inverse of log, because first we have done the log and then, then to get the final results back on, we'll do the inverse of the log. And now if you can just see our predictions are very much near to the trend we actually had. So that our predicted forecasts are very close to the real time series values. That indicates a fairly accurate model, right? So this is how you can just implement a REMA model. This is fairly simple to implement. But first we have to understand these concepts of seasonality, trend, to understand how ACF and PACF graph works, right? Thank you. And if you've liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe.